Yeah, the white balance is kind of whack. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I I want to put on the ring light, but like I know if I put it on, it's gonna wash everything out. And I'm gonna turn it off in like five seconds when I get the hard cam. So I'm just I'm not gonna do it today. Anyway, good morning. Hope everyone is doing well. I haven't worn this shirt in ages, and it has like a little collar. It's weird because like I'm not used to having things around my neck. I used to be really into necklaces when I was little. Little, I mean like elementary and junior high. But now I don't wear them anymore because you get like the little like green rings. But that's what happens when you like wear them too much. So kiddos like wash behind your ears, behind your neck, that type of thing, and then you'll be fine. But yeah. So today, um, gonna be finishing off this shirt finally probably gonna be last day yesterday i did back trim and if you see it dried pretty well this was three layers of the yellow and two layers of blue blue is fully opaque just like the red which is good i kind of like how the yellow is a bit more washed out oh the white balance sheesh um i feel like i kind of like that texture from a distance you can't tell that it's like washed out i think it adds a bit more character um Definitely if I do shirts in the future, I would try and paint off with like a white base. Then it will for sure come up better. Yeah. So today, I'm going to be doing the inverse side of the trim. So yeah, face cam. We'll be back. Cam is flip. <laughs> this is just so I can figure out what angle to get the... Came on. They found that like um, a POV angle looks a lot better for the drawing stuff. Found that out yesterday. I also, because um, my setup, I have a little desk by the mini love seat sofa. I have. So I had, to ro I had to move my whole setup yesterday so my sister and I could play games on the couch. So I had to move my desk. Then. Okay. I think I'm gonna raise my tripod a little bit. It's weird that it's like doing the autofocus. That's weird. Okay, there we go. It was. I don't fully know how to use my my camera, but when I was trying to zoom, it was okay. A little bit brighter for you. Okay, now I can actually get started. I used the turmoil yellow and blue yesterday.
Yeah, I think later. I just started another shirt. Because I think I said yesterday that these are going to be like trials. See how like different patterns of print will look. If I'm actually able to develop printed fabric or do blocking. Like I got a lot of time to burn so I don't mind spending 80 hours on one shirt.
Okay. First coats are done. So I'm gonna go ahead and do second coat. Let me see if I can extend this a little bit. Uh, not how it works, said.
Hey, good morning. Morning, Mr. Dr. Skittles. I still think Skirtles is a pretty dope name. How are we doing today? Uh, just a heads up, I'm pretty quiet. I don't really talk unless I'm talked to. <laughs> Loki sound like my dad anyway. But yeah, free for a chill, hang out, chat, do whatever. Just about done with this one. This yellow trim is done, then the shirt is fully complete. So hyped. Okay, we done! Finally! Like, freaking 20 hours in. Insanity. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside, let the paint dry overnight, and then tomorrow toss it in the dryer, and I can finally start wearing it. Get that drip done. Yeah, I can't really show. Oh, I guess I could. Oh, I don't think I can really show the front face because I don't wanna mess up the print. Yeah, so this one is done for today. So I'm going to go ahead and start on another base shirt that I s tested yesterday, the other day. So this shirt is just plain black. I'm going to see if I can get it to focus. Yeah, it's hard to tell. I'm going to try to change the color filter real quick. Yeah, but if you see, there's like this really faint, it's not coming up in camera, but there's like these wavy type embroider lines across the whole shirt. So I think what I wanted to do for this one, because it's just a regular tee and it has the embroider on both the front and the back. And I can probably draw it out real quick, that way it's easier to visualize. Let me grab some paper real quick. The pattern or the embroidery in the shirt is kind of like waves like this. So, kind of like plumy little waves. Um, so I'm thinking of filling in either the whole front panel or just the sleeves with either like a white, medium, and then a dark blue or like with warmer colors so like the white maybe a corally orange and then a red so i can swatch colors and then think about it um what all is the shirt gonna be like um so what i'm working on right now it's a project i have a couple of odds from like when i first oh my god when i first started doing these um custom shirts i started them last thursday and pro tip do your research before you start using any new medium because i spent 
like six freaking hours on Thursday. Just trying to get like, I don't have any pictures that I can upload, so you'll see tomorrow um, what the final will look like. But like, it was just a regular black tee with a gray pocket right here. And it took like six coats of white paint to just cover the light gray pocket. Because the concept I had was, um, it had a red collar, blue, and then yellow trim, and then like a pattern. Let me actually find the card with the pattern on it. Hold on one sec. My setup is so scuffed, like, I'm always so anxious of knocking down my desk. Um, but yeah, yeah, yesterday I knocked down like a whole bunch of my paints off my desk. It pissed me off. There's a clip of it of it from yesterday, I think, that I posted. But let's see if I can find that card. I think I put it away, so I'm gonna go grab that binder. Cause the idea I had for my shirts was to be um Painting it in like the your like the chest area or like just on the pocket. Oh here it is. Yeah, so the shirt I finished today that's drying has this pattern on the pocket and then the red, yellow, and blue trim to kind of match that primary color theme. A little bit like pop arty style for that specific shirt. Cause the concept I have is once I have the means to mass produce, then I can actually figure out the logistics of, of printing patterns or like doing block printing, that type of thing. But for now, I just wanted to kind of help visualize, just try painting shirts. So like I have a couple other nice sketch patterns that I might potentially use for shirts. That one's cool too. These are just other sketch cards that I've made in the past. Um, have you always done shirts? No. Um, First time doing custom shirts, cause I've been in kind of like an art blocky mood. Like I haven't done art like consistently for a year now. So like this whole streaming thing is to help me like consistently just make stuff, try new mediums. So definitely shirts is a new endeavor. Um, yeah, so tomorrow it'll be fully dry so I can show you the final for that first um, prototype. <laughs> cause like, the goal for right now is um, <laughs> the plan is simple uh, stream build following gain audience sell product make millions simple I mean timeline for that is probably years but hopefully if I just create more in general get the creative juices flowing but yeah uh, script print machines are expensive. Well, I used to work at a print screen shop. It's fun, but it's hard work. Really? Dude, that's so cool. Like, I've been watching, like, videos and tutorials on how to do script printing, but that's actually really cool that you used to work at one. Um. Because, like, the issue... It's, it's interesting, because, like, just the modern American economy, you can buy a lot of things. They can buy, like, a regular factory, right? Like, you can buy, like, a dehydrator or a freeze dryer or, like, uh, like, a 3D printer. You, you can easily buy them online now. So, like... I think the idea or the concept that anyone can make a product and sell is interesting because yes, you can buy the materials. Yes, you can have the means to buy it. Um, but it's a matter of like just luck, uh, networking, and I guess having an audience who wants to buy your stuff. You forget networking too. That's the biggest thing with doing art for me. Yeah, yeah, luck and networking. Uh, that That's huge. I think it'd also be cool. Because the thing I like a lot about traditional art is, like, you can tangibly touch it. You know what I mean? Because, like, I used to do a lot of, like, cringy digital stuff when I was younger, i.e., like, junior high, high school. But now it's, like... It... I think there's a lot more craftsmanship in traditional art. It's a lot more malleable, tangible, you know what I mean? Um... E. I would have a face cam. For art videos, but I don't have money to buy camera right now, so I guess just to view the table. I'm gonna go ahead and start on this one. 
I'm still debating if I want to do warm colors or cool colors. I think cool colors would pop more on the black. But the issue with this fabric paint is, even though it's fully opaque... Okay, if you're gonna be doing, like, painting, then, like, fabric paint has dye that actually the fabric will absorb. That's why it has a bit more opaque colors versus acrylic, which just adheres to the surface. That's why the first trier one on Thursday didn't go well. Um, yeah, because I swatched some warmer and cooler colors from this fabric, and then the warmer colors did come out better. So, I think I will go with cooler colors. Man, this filter's really washed out. There we go, it's a little bit better. Oops. <laughs> yeah, I have auto mod for. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I have auto mod. Um, I thought I went and readjusted the settings. I'll have to go back and do it again. I'm sorry, man. Um, only I'm allowed to curse. <laughs> only I'm allowed. Oops. Sorry, swear like I swear like say. Me too. Me too. Um. Um. It's because, like, I don't have any mods because, like, I'm a zero V Randy. So I don't have, like, anyone who really wants to help. But, you know, it's okay. In time, I'll get some stands. But it's, it's also because, like, I don't know how much an issue, like, profanity would be because I don't have chat on the screen. Um, so I'll, I'll definitely change that so you can be cursing all the time. I don't, I don't care. Um, F word is like every other word for me. Yeah, Loki same. I mean, I definitely tone it down when I stream because like, um, not that there are kids watching, but I'm kind of going to keep things on the do a little bit. Right now, I'm just figuring out what colors to use. I do want to go with that um, warmer color palette. I appreciate you popping in today. Um, Skittles. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to clip. <laughs> right now, I'm looking for like a corally orange. Um, family present isn't a bad way. Family friendly present isn't a bad way to get beca go because it helps give you a wider audience than 18 plus. Yeah. Um, I want to keep it like PG-13. <laughs> I'm very much like, I'll talk about anything, but nothing like too inappropriate, you know what I mean? Ooh, this is a pretty orange. Yeah, I just got all these paints recently, so I haven't like busted them open. Yeah, dummy me. Uh, I, I have a bad habit of opening thing with, things with my teeth. And, because all the new ones, they have like the plastic film on it, right? So, and I have really long nails too. Like, really long. And it was so hard to like, take it off. I actually have a clip from another stream <laughs> telling the story. Um... But, like, I went to, like, pop off that plastic tab with my teeth, and, like, I didn't, like, realize that it's paint. So it popped off, and I got a hell of paint in my mouth. <laughs> it was bad. Like, I still felt like, like there was paint in my mouth for, like, a solid couple hours after, but don't do that. <laughs> also, those artists would like to buy some arts if, kids, if their kids want them. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> use, use your dad's goodie card, you know. Um, yeah because I think it's important for like kids to be creative you know 
think this palette is pretty good. It's like a kind of peachy pink, uh, more muted light orange, and then kind of like a golden rod yellow. I kind of want to see like a more burnt red, maybe. But then I also kind of want it to be bright against black. Bright orange. Yeah, I think because it's like a scarlety orangey red. Um, I've drank pink water. I, I can't talk today. Uh, I drink. I've drank paint water like a big gulp. I know the pain. I've never done that. Cause like I, I have my water in a mason jar, like a mini three inch tall one. My mom yelled at me earlier because I'm not supposed to use a paint. I just told her I buy her a whole new case. Anyway, like I've never used like mugs or cups for my paint water. So like, I've never experienced that hashtag first world problem. Um, personally, because I know if I use a cup, um. It, I will for sure mess up. Um, also ruin my tea by dropping a paintbrush in it. You're a tea guy? <laughs> Sorry. No, I don't know many people drink tea. Um, see, I just drink water. I don't drink no tea or coffee. Cause like caffeine messes me up. Like I, I get the shakes. Um, I've now switched to a mason jar. Good man. Good man. Big brain move. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, this one's already open. <laughs> Sorry, I've never opened this one and it didn't have the film on it. That's sus. Does this one have the film on it? Yes, it does. Okay, I'm gonna pop these off and try not to use my teeth this time. You know the me where it's like the old guy and he's got like um, pastel like green paint all over his face? And the text is like, he thought it was ice cream. <laughs> oh my god. So good. Loki sad, because you know, dementia, people who have dementia, it's really sad. I have a friend whose grandpa has dementia, and it's, it's very hard. It's also difficult, because dementia is not necessarily genetic. Like, it can happen to anyone. That's, that's unfortunate. Anyway. Back to lighter stuff. Uh, not like a tea snob, but yeah, I like good tea. That's valid. My mom's into tea. Um, I'm not too into it. Because, like, I like really sweet stuff. Like, I'll always gravitate towards, like, fruity flavors. Like, juices. Like, my Starbucks order is, like, always going to be, like, the juice refreshers. But I'll sometimes get a coffee, but... Yeah. Um, I also enjoy coffee for the flavor, not for the energy. It's, like, interesting. Do you like black coffee? The only time I've had black coffee is when I, like... One time I was like 10 and my grandma had like her cup of coffee. I was like, can I try some? And she's like, okay. I try a sip, straight black. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Almost like spat all over her because it was so bad. Um, yeah. Well, I always my teeth my fur up and on paints. Don't, don't. Eating paint is bad. I actually stopped myself last night from doing so. Please, yeah, teeth bad. This one has like... Nowhere for me to grab. I cannot grab this film for the life of me. I could just pop a hole in the top. I could do that. Yes, black coffee. Solely because I French pressed mine. Oh, bougie. <laughs> so it isn't burnt like in a coffee cup. Coffee pot. Yeah, it's bougie as frick, man. Okay, I'm gonna try... Just pop the film. First rat. I don't know if you're supposed to do that. I don't. <laughs> I don't know how to take care of supplies. Okay, this one's open. Oh. oh, this one's got a nice rim. Solid two millimeters around the edge. Yeah, I've been growing out my nails for two months now. And I have to have people around the house help me open stuff now. Because, like, I could trim them. But then it's like, I take so much pride because I'm like, oh, it's so pretty. So I worked in food for three years. So I wasn't really, like, allowed to, like, grow up my nails or get acrylics. Like, it's fine. But you're technically not supposed to because you can't 
wash your hands as well if you have longer nails or nail polish. Um, so while I'm unemployed, I'm gonna be growing out these out. <coughs> Get started. Yeah, I haven't swatched these specific colors, so I'm not sure how many layers of paint each one will use, because each one has a different opacity. So I got two different brands. Um, some are more opaque than others, which I still don't understand, because why not have them all be full opacity? I, I cannot comprehend. I do not understand. I think it'd be cool, because it has the seam right here. If I kept this black and then have... This is the sleeve I'm looking at right now. And then have just the sleeve panel be colored and believe the trim black. And then maybe... So I think the trim has the embroidered too, so then paint the trim. That'd be an interesting look. Um, we have a normal coffee maker with hot water attachment, a of Keurig, French press, and a convict stick. Man, you got... <laughs> we make hella coffee in my house. You got three coffee makers, dude. Uh, also, two coffee grinders, one manual, and auto. Sheesh! <laughs> Y'all cracked. <laughs> yeah, I'm not allowed to make coffee in our house. Because my mom hates the smell. So therefore, no coffee is allowed to be brewed. And which is fine. Like, I don't like it anyway, thankfully. So I'm not going to bitch about it too much. But my grandma likes coffee. So anytime she's come over... And it's been a while since she's come over, but... We'll just buy her some instant coffee for her to make. <laughs> Let's zoom in a little bit. Get those action shots. Oh, and an automatic hot water pot heater. Yeah, we got one of those. Because so my dad likes to drink, or liked to drink hot cocoa in the morning. So he has like a little mini hot water pot. I drink dark roast. GF likes medium. Sister is instant. My mom is decaf. Wide range. That's why you need three makers. <laughs> yeah, multiple coffee makers for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool though. Like, I love the smell of coffee. Like, I've debated whether or not to get, like, a coffee-scented candle. And then just keep my room door closed, that way she can't smell it. But... Apparently... Candles are bad. Like, it's better to have, like... Like a... Like, heated oil or incense... Than... Candles. Or, like, air fresheners. Supposedly. That was in a random Facebook article I saw, so I don't know how factual it is. Candle has a warm French roast from space, so you could do that in moderation. Yeah, I would. I think I might do candles again in my room. It's just right now in our air because I'm on West Coast, it's pretty hazy still. Like, we had a little bit of drizzle, so like it cleared up a little bit of the smog, but it's still kind of sus to go outside right now. So, maybe once, like, in like fall or winter, once this is a bit air is a bit cleaner, I'll start doing candles again.
I do not know why I poured so much paint. Like I spread out this huge glob and I'm not gonna use it all. I didn't think it out. Yeah, I'm not sure how long I'll go for today. I definitely want to get a pretty good head start on this shirt. Because I'm debating how, like, I want to set up content. I kind of want to do one project and then finish it. But then I also, like, want to try different mediums. Not every day, but, like, every other day. So I haven't touched my India inks in a while, so I kind of want to dabble with those again. Because for the t-shirts, um, I bought a couple new ones to like do tests on. And then the other day we went to Goodwill and got, or I got, several secondhand ones to practice on. Like this one, I found some pretty cool stuff. Like, go to any secondhand series, find some pretty fire clothes sometimes. Like, I got these really drippy striped shorts.
I'm still here. It's good. I'm not very chatty either, so. I appreciate being here though, man. What you working on though? I'm working like overlays or something. Cause I think what I want to try and do, oh, there's a fiber that this is picking up. Oh. Like I want to try and get like, get one highlight or clip per stream. I definitely, cause I have a coherent schedule. Like I, the only time I didn't stream at 10 a.m. PST was yesterday cause I had a doctor's appointment at like 11. Um, so like, what I kind of want to work on more is doing more creative projects because like the reason why I haven't launched gaming yet is I told myself I want to integrate something art related into any game I play um, and also like just I don't have a good setup for gaming yet my, my MacBook she's already humming right now so she can't handle gaming yet so I have a bit more time until I can upgrade to figure out concepts and stuff so it's just a lot of planning I'm trying to do so I know like art content can be kind of like, not mid, but it's not as engaging. So I'm trying to think of ways to make it more engaging, you know? Uh, Ban words for moderation. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> uh, look it up, recent, word, recent words in other languages. Yeah, valid, valid. Um, also adding some cringy Twitch words to like Boomer. What? Okay. Boomer is my favorite. Don't. <laughs> don't ban the word. It'll ban me in your chat. Please don't. <laughs> Boomer's not that mean, though. Like, it's kind of like... I guess people give words meaning, but it's not... It's not It's not at that level yet. Okay, not banning Boomer? Okay, phew. Saved. We good. <laughs> oh, sheesh. I think it's funny how, like, streamers will ban, like, random words or phrases because it just annoys them. I mean, I, it probably gets to a point with like 50 people are spamming a certain word, it gets really annoying, but it's it's just funny. I mean, can't relate. Wouldn't be Randy. I also need to work on like cross-posting. Like, I haven't posted anything I've made on stream on IG yet, which I need to. I need to. Mm. Like, my last post was just announcing that I was going to start streaming. You banned Pog and Mongus? I don't care for it so much to be banned. Valid. <laughs> but that's like... That's like Twitch stuff. That's what chatters like to say, dude. You banned those, they're not going to want to chat. Like, I'm kind of new to Twitch. I mean, I've been watching since last year, like, kind of new to chatting. I mean, I don't be spamming the, the emotes and stuff because I don't fully understand them. Because I think the thing with small streamers uh, is that you get to have more, like, conversational type chat discussions versus just people reacting with emotes and stuff. Like, I never chat in, like, larger streamers, because, like, I know the one time I say something, I'll get banned. Like, I'm so scared to, like, say something in Hassan's chat. Because, like, I'm not the type of person to troll, but, like, if I say something genuine, I'm so scared that, like, he'll be triggered. <laughs> but one day I'll be confident enough. What, what's gotta happen is I gotta get big enough to where, like, I'm untouchable, you know? Yeah, I don't know, girl. You're not that old. You're mid twenties. That's not too bad. I mean, kind of a boomer, but not not there yet. You know, only nineties terms in my stream. Okay, valid, valid. Also keeps kids away. <laughs> no children allowed. Um, I guess. I mean, I think you could change your settings to make yourself like adult content. But I don't think you want to do that because that's gonna fuck up your like search like your algorithms type of thing.
not even boomer. But you're you're 25, dude. It's basically a boomer. 30 more years and you'll be a boomer. <laughs> it's funny because like my mom, her only internet like knowledge is like stuff she sees on Facebook. And like a while ago she asked me, she's like, what is a boomer? I was like, well, you're a boomer. Got him. I know like hand painting the fabric is tedious. It's really calming for me. Cause I don't like paint paint because blending and stuff, shading's too difficult for me. But this is really relaxing. I do have it already set to that. Okay, that's good. That's good. Filter out the, the zoomers. Uh, but kids can easily make accounts anyway because parents kind of suck nowadays. Yeah. And I'm indifferent because I'm 22 and I personally didn't start like using the internet till I was like 10 or 11. Like I started watching YouTube when I was 10 because my mom was like, you do bad. Um, but now there's like iPad kids or like iPad moms where they're just like, here, here's a tablet. Go entertain yourself. Like, you can have as many presets, like parental safeguards on your um, tech, but I think it's probably smart enough to figure out how to evade it. So I think it is, the responsibility is on like the creator or the platform. Like, to some extent. Cause like, I don't want to mark my stuff as 18 plus cause like, I think, I know Twitch guidelines have to be 13. I think at that point you're like, matured enough to like, make your own decisions. Like you can still be influenced, but you're not as like, innocent or gullible. I will allow that mission. Uh, it's funny because like the settings I have it allows like moderate cursing It's like permitted term creeps permitted term shit <laughs> uh, Yeah, stupid swear words all yeah um, I also stream a lot of Pokemon and I'm an adult with an adult audience and Pokemon is a kid game. Yeah Nintendo baby games um, So number one that's the perfect place for creeps to be creeps Yeah I agree. So if someone in, is a kid in my chat and is found, they will be banned. Valid. Valid. Because, like, they're basically breaking the rules, you know? Not following, like, your predetermined age guideline for your channel. So that's good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because my target is like 15 plus. That's my target right now. I don't want to have like babies. <laughs> it's also weird because like I was born in 99. It's weird to think that like kids were born in the 2000s. It's so weird to me. Olivia and Hope are allowed because they're from friends streams and discords and they're cool cuts. Yeah. Um, 
in that case, like, certain individuals are fine. Like, it's different if you know them, like, IRL, or if you've known them, like, online long enough. Because, like, you know they'll be, like, mature enough to handle it. Or not be too influenced by it. Because, like, I know I didn't start cursing until I was, like, 16 or 17. I was really, like, reserved for those type of things. Only recently, not recently, but, like, like, late high school. Started not being as, I guess, conservative with those type of things. I think also, like, I was so worried about everyone else's opinions. Kind of like the cliche, be like, ooh, be yourself. So now I'm not as concerned about it. Yeah. Unless you say their age in my chat, then I gotta ban him. Yeah. Don't ask, don't tell. Yeah, there's also... Yeah, there's a lot of bad stuff. <laughs> um, I was talking to my mom. And it was yesterday, I think. And we're, she's Japanese, so I'm half Japanese. And we're, she was ta casually just mentioning... She's like, how come... Like... A certain group of people can say a racial slur, but I can't say, like, Jap and use it, like, colloquially. I was like, well... Okay. I was like, let me educate you. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I've never heard someone say Jap towards me. I was like, well, okay. Um, there was one lesson in high school, and we were looking at, like, Super Bowl commercials, because we were analyzing, like, different literary devices, different advertising techniques. And, um... Because, like, a lot of more popular Japanese commercials are, like, kind of kooky and weird. And that's, it's very artsy in terms of, like, originality and concept. Um, and after that class, because uh, that was, like, second period for me, like, later in the day. So, like, maybe, like, um, passing period from, like, maybe fourth to fifth period. I heard these kids behind me, like, kids, teenagers. Um, they're like, yeah, those Japs are really fucking weird. It's like, they're fucked up. It's like, okay. First time I ever heard Jap used derogatory, let alone even heard it. Like, RL. Like, I'm in Washington, so pretty um, left-leaning. But I live in a fairly white town. Which is fine. No trouble here. I haven't really experienced any, like, prejudice myself. Thankfully. Um... But anyway, I told her about this. She's like, yeah, I've never, I've literally never, no one's ever called me a Jap. I was like, oh, that's good. Me neither, but like, it's, I've heard the word, you know? And I was like, you know, concerning certain words like the N-word, it, it's used colloquially because, um, kind of like taking back the word. Like, you know how queer is recently um, more accepted as a term than a slur? Um, also it takes... It's a hard topic. Uh, she and I had a discussion about it. Because a lot of her opinions are, like, solely based on her point of view. Like, she doesn't fully understand, like, everyone else's, like, struggle or trouble as much. And what it basically I tried to explain is, like, Jap was solely used as a derogatory term during time of, like, World War II and internment. When in comparison, like, the N-word, colloquially, is more commonly used as, like, a friendly phrase between friends and stuff. So they gave it new meaning, you know? And it was popularized. So, like, it's okay for... If you feel comfortable saying it, cool. But, like, know your audience, you know? Like, don't be dropping the hard R, like, oof. Ha <laughs> ha. 
I mean, at least you're educated in other language, you know. I, I'm in rural Ohio and lived in a small town. I've heard stuff my own grandpa. Yeah, it, it sucks how there's so much, like, different, like, cultural differences just in the continental U.S. Like, I've lived in Washington and a little bit in Hawaii. And the whole atmosphere is, is so different in Hawaii. Um... So I knew slurs at a young age, not proud that I did, but at hell I know I, I know the right from yeah, that's good. Uh, I think what it comes down to is education. Like I personally think there should be like a standardized textbook used by all children across the country concerning like history, that type of thing. That way everyone learns the same textbook. Because the issue is, like for example, the whole how CRT or critical race theory was more popularized recently to represent uh, teaching white supremacy in school, which is it's not, it's, li it's literally not. Um, how they're trying to basically erase like black history or any type of any other racial injustice that happened. And what happens when you erase history is that people don't learn about it. They don't understand where their inherent biases may come from and just encourage and validate their own um, superior sentiments. So I think, because uh, I have a neighbor, she grew up in Virginia, I think. She's 60 um, ish. Like, she didn't learn about Japanese internment until she moved to Washington. And that's very um, unfortunate because if you don't teach those happenings, then future generations won't know about it, and then the same thing will happen again. Or other people will experience prejudice or hate crime. So I think it's important. I think it'd be best if everyone learned all like racial history stuff. It's just because you teach it doesn't mean you promote that ideology or promote that behavior. You're just informing, you're not encouraging. It's my hot take. Because I think that someone um, who lives like a really really rural area or like a high populated city will learn the same history i think that's important We see this. This peachy color is fairly not opaque. You see how this one is more dried and translucent. So this one, oh, bring them close, sorry. Most of for sure need two coats. Your knowledge and exposure of that kind is good in a way because it gives the individual the education of why it was wrong and how it was wrong, thus giving them their own choice with what to do with that input, of course. I agree. Um, another side story. I told this last week too, but this was a couple years ago. A mutual friend and this individual, like, their Facebook account was private, but since the, um, the post was shared, I could see, like, the post and the comment thread. So basically, he took a picture of his younger brother's um, worksheet that he was given in school. And the worksheet was... Um, it had an infographic talking about... Um, like, the hierarchies of white supremacy, right? And his caption was like, I don't... Like, how dare they teach us in school? Like, I don't understand how this can be promoted in a public school system. He's like, this teacher should be fired. It's like, well... And all the comments were supported, like, oh, yeah, fire her. Burn her at the stake. <laughs> um, 
but it cited the source. Like it had like the page and like the author and the book title. So I actually looked at the book that that chart came from and the book, you know what it was about? Teaching racial disparity in classrooms in a way that is productive. It's not promoting the ideology. It's just explaining it and exposing kids to be like, hey, this is what this group thinks and that's not okay. And then teaching them ways to um, identify and correct any biasy behavior. And like, I was so tempted to like clap them in the comments, be like, dumbass, like that's not what it's about. If you would have looked at the source, spent two minutes doing, not even two minutes, doing just a quick Google search, you would have figured that out, dumbass. But I didn't because when people are so set on an opinion, they, they do not want to hear an, a different opinion, you know? Like, I don't want to get clapped. There's like 30 people in that common thread. So it's like... And that kind of ties back into the CRT. Where if you don't teach it, then they don't know. Issues will keep happening. More disparity, more disparity will occur. So... Anyway, the best thing you can do is just push for policy that encourages education and exposure. Exposure hasn't been taught about the Holocaust. So yeah, that's why it's required to teach in Germany. Like, they hound that into the kid, not the kids. <laughs> it's required to put that into the kid education because like they don't want that to happen again. Oh, yeah. It's it's very difficult when. Like you said, you grew up with those type of biases from individuals that like you grew up around or you trusted. So inherently, you're gonna to wanna to copy their behaviors, their language, their colloquialism, the way they speak, their mannerisms. And it's really good that you're like aware of it and you're trying to think in a way that is not necessarily like repressing it, but understanding why it's okay or not okay to say these things. So that's really good. And Especially with younger people, like kids, they don't understand until they gain that perspective. Um. Like, I think it's important to consume different types of media, different types of news outlets. From both with what you agree with and what you disagree with. That way you can kind of like justify what you're feeling and thinking, and also understand a different perspective. Um, because if you don't listen to other people's opinions, then you're just going to keep validating your own feelings. So it's important to understand and listen to other perspectives. That way you yourself become more well-rounded. Far from dad's side, but mom's side is like a touch of good old southern racism. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because like we didn't really talk about like politics or anything when I was younger, but now that I'm more like I've educated myself on more issues, right? Definitely a leftist because um, you know human rights are epic. <laughs> but um, like I will like I like to have this discussion with my parents because like I low key like to challenge them so i'll be like oh why do you think that way like what made you think that way like what experiences made you think that way you know and it's funny because you hear some like kind of like rough takes and you're like sheesh like <laughs> just be like uh, glad i didn't pick those up from you but uh, love being half midwestern and half southern yeah Big ol' mixing pot. <laughs> it's also interesting because politics in general, it's so heavily influenced by re religious undertones. Like if you look at conservatism, a lot of it, the policies kind of align with like the biblical text, right? When like, leftist is definitely more progressive 
like more modern interpretations of the constitution right I tend to vote third party libertarian or Whig. interesting y'all never win though <laughs> but I have that blend of both sides of the two parties from my family yeah um, I've taken like the tests and I'm like I'm like center left it's, like concerning human rights issues like full left full left uh, but then like kind of like more like economic financial issues I take more right mainly because like uh, my dad he's a small business owner so like I kind of get a lot of my opinions from him because you know those type of things um, but I would vote independent but I think like a lot of my policies definitely align more with independent um, progressives but they're not popular enough for like a mass amount of people to stand with them you know No, we never do. Gary Johnson got close, but they left him out of the 2016. He did have enough votes for it, yeah. Um, unfortunately, a lot with, like, the presidential, like, it's important to vote with your local elections, because you have a lot more, like, I guess, influence in terms of numbers. Um, that's why it's important to vote for, like, your local cabinet positions. Um, what was I going to say? But a lot, a lot of people will vote with the personality. That's why, like, Trump won 2016. Really unfortunate that he was, like, memed enough to win. Anyway, not going to talk about that. <laughs> um, but, because, like, I was 17 in 2016, so, like, I couldn't vote, unfortunately. Um, I think, like, like, you hear stories be like, oh, I cut this family member out because they voted for, voted for Trump. It's like, well, not necessarily, because they're more likely just voting with their party lines, right? And... To me, a lot of Republican policies have undertones that are anti-progressive, like, i.e. trying to take away rights that were previously given, so like, i.e. gay marriage, any transgender rights, which is not okay. Um, I, th I think America is, like, the, well, one of the more, not like the leader leader, but like, should be a forefront of progressive rights in terms, because like, we were based on freedom, we were built on the concept of freedom of religion, that type of thing. Um. Well, if we did when they were Republican primary, we 100% would have just went third party. Yeah. It's crazy to think, like, the logistics of um, voting in general. Like, I'm not too educated on it, so I don't really have, like, a formal opinion. Um, like, I'm more, I'm more, like, pay attention to the big issues, that type of thing. I think a lot of, cause like, you will care for policies that directly affect you, right? So that's why I think like hearing different stories, hearing different perspectives will allow for more, a more centrist population, I think. And I think it also, like, people have to educate themselves about issues as well. Like, it's so easy to, like, read a headline or repeat a talking point and not know the greater details of things. Like, people always clown on leftist memes because they're hella wordy, but, like, in that context, they're trying to educate, you know, bring awareness or try to inform a little bit more information versus just two sentences, you know? <laughs> libertarian model all yeah it, it's it's funny i like i like to clown on the libs <laughs> i have a joke that i'm not gonna say it's not pg-13 but 
<laughs> like, I've debated whether or not to become a stand-up comic, then I can actually release my true takes and just say them sarcastically sarcastically and make people think that I'm joking, but I'm actually not. <laughs> I would never be able to do stand-up. Like, I would die. Like, even now, like, just talking, Mike, no cam. Low-key shaky and anxious, but that's I. I'll get there one day. I actually did buy the shirt because it was too funny. Oh, that's, that's not a shirt. <laughs> great. It's great. I mean, do you wear it out, though? I think it's so funny how people will proudly wear like, campaign shirts. I mean, the reason why they make the shirts is to bring awareness, just like um, increasing brand awareness. God, no, yeah. <laughs> I wanted a family for his picnic barbecue because I thought it was really so oh, epic. <laughs> I mean, that's what means someone had to buy the shirt. And, like, they had the assumption that someone would want to get that shirt, want to win that shirt. <laughs> it's great. It's great. Right now, going on the second coat. <laughs> Excuse me. Going on with the second coat of this uh, warmy peachy color. Yeah, I usually go for two hours, but I have, I have a lot of time today, so I might go for longer. Right now, we're at two o two. We'll see how long I go for. Cause like with art, I kind of gotta be in the mood to do it. I mean, definitely having a consistent time, like a schedule to do it, is definitely helping me a lot. But... I think the longest I've went, because I knew stream was six hours, and that was for the te first test shirt stream. Because this is just really fun to do. Yeah, I can totally see the difference between one coat and two coats. Level of opacity. Let's just hope she dries better. I also read that these fabric paints don't work as well with synthetic fabrics. And this specific shirt is like part cotton and part synthetic. So that could be another reason why it's not adhering as well. Not 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 adhering, but like dying. Also, this is black. I'm gonna do more of this, then I'm probably gonna want to get lighter shirts. I mean, although I only like wear black. Sorry, my color. That's why I really like the first design. Because it was black with like a little pop of color, you know? Branching a little bit.
I think I'm also gonna have to cover up some of the black and border again with black paint. So I'm clipping a little bit. Still getting used to like the precision of brushes. I think I'll probably stream some more painting, but not at my desk later night. Oh, that'd be epic, dude. Like I said it before, I like popping into like smaller art streams. Because one, I need attention and I like that one-on-one -on -one engagement. And also it's cool to like just support other people creating. Because I know it's like kind of discouraging to work hard and have no return. So even if just one person popping in makes it a little bit better. I can definitely do that for someone, you know? Because my goal is to create a space where like people, no matter your skill level, will be encouraged to create, you know? Because I honestly think that creative careers will be the future concerning like automation and AI even though there are artificial intelligent softwares that can create like somewhat like realistic or abstract renderings I think people will gravitate more to creative people I hated streaming like four shadows of Pokemon to like no one and it's just like why am I doing this? Yeah, I feel it. Um, that's why like earlier I said I want to integrate something art related into gaming. But it's about the grind, you know. I'm a different cause like I try and go for like two hours of art every day. Like I'm also thinking like what the format will change once I do have a gaming setup. Like maybe do two hours of art then two hours of game every day. Or maybe do like art every other day and then gaming every other day. But all it takes is like one person who's like dedicated to watch, you know, and that'll lead to others. I think a problem that I'm having is like just engaging. I'm not very talkative. So. Oh, but it's something I'm trying to work on. Like, if you pop in for multiple days, you'll probably hear me saying the same thing every day. <laughs> so, get ready. Buckle up. I also want to work on, like, my improv skills. So, I, w I was planning on taking, like, an improv and then a dance class in 2020. But then, um, stay-at-home orders were in effect, so I couldn't really do that. Um, so... If this is a good outlet for me to just get used to talking, then I think it's good for me. Also, I don't go out much, so just talking and like having an outlet to socialize will be good for me, like mental health wise. Oh. Do you want to sense hard to chat to strangers when it's when it, you're in your art? Low key, yeah. Um, I'm very much like I don't talk unless I'm talked to. So like if. Y'all want to chat, I'll talk. Otherwise, like, um, I don't talk too much. Because, like, you're too focused on actually working. That's why I kind of like the concept of our streams. It's like, usually pretty chill. Not that there's, like, an, an insane amount of pressure to, like, perform. But I know I like watching people make stuff. Like, if, like if I go on IG... And I see like an art video playing, I'll watch it. <laughs> Cause it's just so satisfying to watch people do traditional work to me. Like see people painting or drawing. Like the process I really find interesting and fascinating. Cause you can learn some pretty pro strats from like self-taught people. If you want to improv skills, then DM me a tabletop game. <laughs> I've wanted to play like D and D. I've never, I've never been like formally invited by my friends when we were in school. I think it'd be fun. 
it's just like i'm not too imaginative i think that's the main issue like i'm not properly diagnosed but i i i have always shown signs of like neurodivergence whether it be like add or some uh, spectrum of autism so like some such social interactions or like normalities i can't like fully i guess understand i don't know i mean i've gotten a lot better now i used to be so quiet when i was younger like i hated talking to people but now i'm like i don't mind talking to people like if i'm going to the store like i'll i'll have like like you know like a really quick casual conversation with like the cashier or something because to me because I, I worked food service and it sucked i mean it was fun some days but it sucked right because a lot of people don't, don't give a shit you're a a step on minimum wage workers so i can treat you like crap but to me like one positive interaction can make someone's day you know can like stop them from walking out can encourage them to keep going at their job you know because no one wants to work an entry-level job you know so if something can make it a little bit better then i can do that and i usually tip well like, if I go to, like, Starbucks, I'll give them a 20. Because in my head, if there's six workers, everyone gets three bucks. You know, that's epic. Like, if I see a jar, I'll just put money in. Because when I was working, I would make, like, maybe $40 every week. So, but I'd always give my tip money back if I ever saw a tip jar. Because like, it's all under the table because it's cash. So I might as well just, like, keep circulating it, you know? Oh. <sighs> Well, there are no more ADD. It's all back into the bubble of ADHD. Yeah. It's just hyper focus or loss of focus. Yeah. And we have a history of neurodivergence and like mental health issues in our family. So I I, I probably have a li high likelihood of <laughs> being a little bit autistic. <laughs> oh, but that's okay. Like I'm not too ashamed about it. Cause I fully believe that you should embrace who you are. You know. And when necessary, see whatever um, tools or any medical assistance you may need to help understand yourself. It's good to pursue. I see that, but I haven't gotten taken any tests. But I even mean, at this point, it's kind of late. Like, I'm out of school. So, like, I know how to. Like, ask for directions. I, I can handle basic social st situations and interactions. But just picking up on some social cues I have an issue with. I mean, like, I know I try and educate myself. Like, I'll read, like, site books. Um, read, like, college papers, that type of thing. That way I'm aware. Of, like, how to identify... certain social cues, that type of thing.
So that's interesting because like Twitch is just like glorified chat rooms. Like low key. But yeah, so on. He's making content, like playing video and then people talk about it. Or like talk to the person. So that's cool because each stream has like a different vibe. And that's solely dependent on like who's in chat. It's interesting to see the different dynamics on the platform. I think that's the most intriguing, intriguing thing for me. The whole appeal to Twitch. When I first started like watching content on it. So I was a hu huge YouTube frog. Because I watched a lot of like streamers content on YouTube before I started watching like their actual streams. Oh. That looks nice. Just about fully opaque now. Which is good. I also just need to work on like conversational skills. Like it's so hard for me to like keep talking to someone. Like if I'm ever out with a friend or something, like I'm fairly quiet. I have this distinct memory. Cause I used to have a friend who I used to walk to school with in high school. You know, like I didn't talk much. I mean there were days where like I'd be more talkative. And I <laughs> I said to him. I was like, you know, I really enjoy, like, walking to school with you because, like, I, I feel really comfortable. Like, I know I don't talk much, but I feel really comfortable. And he's like, well, it's awkward for me. <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny. I mean, because I was definitely, like, the loner type. Like, I had friends, but, like, no, like, no, like, diehard friends in school. Which is fine. Like, Looking back, it's because I just, just wasn't um, able to pick up on social stuff. Mm. Gotta go. Gotta prep food for dinner. Nice. Well, thank you for popping in today, Skittles. I really appreciate it, man. Hope you have fun prepping dinner. <laughs> food prep is, like, low-key the worst, so I hate it. Uh, when I was doing fast food, like, everything was pre-packaged, basically. We just had to cut veggies. Which ain't bad. Ain't bad. Because you got, like, the cutting machines to do it. But being a prep cook sucks ass. I had one friend who told me he used to work at, like, a place that served, like, soup and chatter every day. So he'd get to work at 4 a.m. on his shifts and then cut potatoes for two hours. Two hours. Insane. I mean, I guess that's the life of like a factory worker doing the same thing all day for eight hours. My sister, she works in um, packaging at a manufacturing place, so she puts stuff in boxes and bags all day. So she has some movement. Like, I can't imagine like working on a conveyor belt or a line all day. Like, that's crazy. Guaranteed carpal tunnel.
Yeah, I think goal today is to get this part of the sleeve done. With all the four different shades. Based on current time, it'll probably be five, six hours, but that's okay. What's up? Hey! Good morning, Yana. Hope you're doing well. How's your printing going? I got that first. Um, the primary color pocket one done. I have the trim done. So it'll be dry tomorrow, so I can actually wear it tomorrow, probably. Um, yeah, I'm starting in a new one. Uh, I don't know if you were there for that certain stream, but I got a couple of used shirts. And this specific one has this wavy embroidery on it. So the concept for this one is to paint the sleeves and then the collar trim in with the waves with kind of like a warm color palette. So I have a coral, peach, orange, yellow, and red here. So goal today is to get this sleeve done. Cause I can only do one side at a time. That way it can allow for it to fully dry. So first shirt is probably like Probably 15 hours, but that's because I fucked up on Thursday. So this one hopefully will take maybe two, three days. Maybe. I don't know. It depends on. Because uh, the main issue with doing the fabric paint is letting it dry. I think that's the main time consuming thing. I'm glad you're here, man. Good dear E. Yeah, because goal is to get just this part done. And I do have a bit more time today, so I can go a bit longer. Yeah, right now working on a second coat of this peach color. 
because you can see how this first layer is not as opaque as two coats. Still mad that like a lot of these paints aren't fully aren't fully opaque. It's really frustrating. Like I don't understand. Like the whites and the black fully opaque. Like those are on point. You just need one coat. But all the other pigments are translucent as frick. Got any plans for later, Yana? Good draw, you can chill. Play game. Go for a walk, I don't know. What I should do is go for a walk, but I don't know well. <laughs> yeah, it's significantly cooler out now. I guess until the sun fully shows. Yeah, it was actually... Because here in Washington, it's been pretty overcast the past couple days. Like, heat wave gone! It's great. It was nice, but a little bit of drizzle, so... On my morning bike ride, it was, like, refreshing. And I live near a river. And the trail that I go on is by a river. So there was like hell of fishermen in the water fishing, catching nothing. Six feet apart. <laughs> um, it's kind of scary though, because like there had to be like maybe 100 people, because it's a long ass river, right? And like people were showing up since Monday, so both Monday and Tuesday there was like a cop car on the trail, like just parked, and I was like, ruh row. <laughs> I mean, it's probably because like. Uh, it's a fairly popular trail, so like nothing bad really happens. Um, but probably because there's just like a lot of people in the area. That's why they have to have police presence. In case like someone checks their fishing fishing rod at another guy. I don't know.
Yeah, actually, I think I might think I'm gonna go for a walk right now. Yeah, go touch some grass. <laughs> May not get much sun, but I have not been active in a bit. Lol. Yeah, touch some grass. Go for a walk. You gotta get up. Get some vitamin D. Leave me, that's fine. Go touch some grass. Leave Megan all alone.
Yeah, this yellow sucks. Let's see if I can get another shade. I'm not going to use this bright yellow, I'm going to use a more kind of like a muted goldenrod. Hopefully this golden rod will be a bit more opaque. <sighs> oh, this looks a lot better.
I have returned. Yana has ascended. How was your walk? Got your steps in. Got a little bit more progress in. Still work at all that golden rod. A gray printing menace on a rotten banana peel that was hanging from a fence. That's an interesting composition for a shot. <laughs> yeah, cause like I go for bike rides every morning right on a on a trail, and my favorite part is seeing like the birds and there's little like wild bunnies or rabbits, little skirt across the path, and they're so cute. Definitely my favorite part. Also, just getting fresh air. It's good. Praying mantises terrify me. I hate the way they look. Dude, I love bugs. Like, because we do a lot of gardening. So, like, there'll be an occasional, like, bug that'll scurry on your leg or something. Like, I get freaked out if I don't see it, but once I see it, I'm like, oh, this is cute, you know? I think also with bugs, too, there's so much variety in the way they look. Like, this whole different world that they live in. I wish we had more praying mantises in our yard. Like, we usually just get like little beetles, ladybugs, a couple cauliflower, butterflies, and a couple swallowtails too. I haven't seen a monarch in ages, mainly because we're so up far north. We, we usually get a lot of June bugs in our yard, which are pests, so anytime we see them, we gotta kill them. I can't stand juice bugs. Yeah, they're scary. They're loud too. Yeah, they're so loud and freaky. Yeah, there was one time we were we were running the garden and I actually stepped on one, and like it was on the ground, but I could hear like a buzzing. I was like, "What the fuck is that?" And it was really loud. I looked down on the ground and I could see like trying to like like freaking out, and I squished it. I remember on Fourth of July this year. We were harvesting potatoes <laughs> at like 9 or 10 p.m. So it's getting dark and we were working because we had like a light, like a spotlight while we were working. And the June bugs were flying all around us, like getting really close. Scary, man. I mean, they're scary, but like their shells kind of be cool, though.
Well, earwigs are whack too. Uh, my mom, she went to a friend's house and her friend has like a small um, Asian pear tree. So they they look more like apples. They're really round. About like this big, like maybe three inches um, diameter. And they were, like mom brought home two big ass buckets full of pears. So we're probably gonna make jam either today or tomorrow. Later. Cause it is a bit cooler today so we won't like die of heat stroke indoors. Um, we were cutting them because we were um, cubing them because it'll be easier to boil down if they're cut into smaller pieces. And we were cutting them, there's a big ass earwig. We're like, what the fuck? <laughs> but when my sister was little, um, like a bee flew in her ear. So now we're all scared of bees. <laughs> I don't know the full details because that was when she was like four, like really little. So, I think it happened at school, when she was at preschool, and like, she was freaked out for ages. I mean, I don't mind bees now, like I'm not as freaked out, but when like anything gets too close, it's like, gotta dodge. I think people who are beekeepers are so brave and also mentally insane. I think it'd be fun. Like if we ever get like, like a farm property, I'd like to have at least like one bee house. Like I would, I would hire someone to maintain it. Like I would not touch it. But also, like honeybees won't hurt you. And like bumblebees, they won't hurt you unless you like try and hurt them. Then they'll sting you. Because it's basically like kamikaze if they sting you. Like. <laughs> You know, be living long. Um, I hate, I hate wasps. And like, there was an article that was releasing like, there's the big like, big ass like, Asian hornets on the west coast now. Dude, I can't. I can't. I thought I saw one the other day. Like, it looked just like the picture, but like small. Oh my god, I scary stuff. Like, I didn't read the full article because I was so scared. I was like, I don't want to know. Hornets look like something out of a horror movie for sure. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> we were actually attacked by a hornet's nest one time. And we were out hiking. This is when I had to be like, maybe 10 my sister ate. Because we used to go like hiking all the time when we were little, like every weekend as a family. We don't do that anymore because we're all like fat. So <laughs> anyway, so we we would collect like twigs and sticks and moss. And my sister, she found like this old decaying log and like it had a piece of moss on it. So she went and grabbed the moss from the log. And then like a minute later, we heard like buzzing. 
we were like, oh shit. So it, like, like the horn was attacking us, right? Because we're all right by where the log was. So he ran back to the car and my sister, lucky little shit, she got no stings. My mom got one or two. I got three. One like on my finger, one on my ass, and then one on my head, I think. And it was funny because like we got in the car and like we like took off any like outer layers that were close to like try and shake them off, right? And then like we looked through each other's hair to see if there were any stuck in our hair. And then we finally went to a, Mac to a McDonald's and then like washed up. And like as I was getting out of the bathroom stall, like a wasp like flew out of the stall. So like there was still like one, cause I could feel like one moving around in my pants, right? When I was sitting in the car as we were going to like to the restroom, right? And like <laughs> I saw it fly out of the stall. I was like, oh shit, there was one in my pants. Um, yeah, wasp things. They weren't. <laughs> I would be screaming. Yeah, it was. It was bad. <laughs> thankfully, there. Were, I mean, kind of thankfully, not thankful. Um, there was like no other like people on the trail when it happened. So, like, I mean, no one came to help us, but also no one else got hurt. <laughs> so, <laughs> no one else got attacked. I remember it was like near the start of when we uh, were walking, because like there was like this big ass like wooden playground, and we were so excited to go play on it. Uh, yeah, it sucked. Uh, anyway, like, my dad got like five stings, like three in the head, and like a couple just on the rest of his body. Um, we didn't like go to the doctor because you only really need to go to the doctor if you get stung and you have like an reaction or like if you like feel nauseated because if you get stung too many times that's when it fucks you up like one or two you're fine we were a bit worried about my dad because he got like three on his head right but thankfully he was fine he toughed it out uh, but my mom jokingly in the car as we were heading home she's like yeah at least we know like none of us are allergic and it's like ha ha <laughs> yeah uh, after that, we were for sure like all kind of scared of bees. But now that we're working outside more, like my dad still freaks out. Like he does not like when like the bees are around. We have like hella lavender at our house, and if you're familiar with lavender, they attract a lot of bees because they bloom um, primarily starting in June, maybe late May, and then they bloom to right about now. All our plants um, um, stopped flowering about a week ago. So we cut off the dead flower heads and that way because uh, if you're gardening it's best to cut off dead flower heads that way the plant conserves energy and tries to invest it into either um, putting more energy towards a new bloom or a new flower or towards um, the uh, or if it's done flowering then just more energy towards the next round you know but ah uh, uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, so like the lavender attracts a lot of honeybees, which is really good because it helps cross pollinate the rest of our, our plants. That's so kind of scary though. <sighs> yeah, I hate like summertime. I mean, because it's nice because there's more bees, but then there's also more wasps. So, like, anytime we try and like cook or eat outside, they always swarm around us and like my dad gets really pissed off because he he likes grilling so like anytime he grills he'll be lost and he'll get mad but it's like dad they're for sure well like they like the smell of meat so like they always will gravitate towards that and also you're just outside um, it's gonna happen like anytime they try and eat outside i'll be like i'm gonna eat inside like i'll take my food inside that we don't gotta worry about the bees. <laughs> Cause like they always come out to like the little outdoor table and we all like get settled in, get all the utensils out, finally sit down, then they start swarming.
Okay, first coat done. Time to start coat number two. Yeah, we were concerned, but we did get attacked because my aunt, um, she's allergic to bees, so she can't have honey. Um, she has an EpiPen just in case she accidentally has honey or if she gets stung. So my mom was more so concerned that we would have a reaction if we did get stung, but we didn't, so thankfully, we all good. Thankfully, none of us have any severe allergy. Like my mom, she's just allergic to um, shellfish. But everyone else in the house is good. So you don't, we can like eat anything. Like my mom just has to take a Benadryl before she takes any, or eats any shellfish. And she's set. It's funny though, because whenever she does take the Benadryl, she gets kind of like dopey and loopy. Almost like she's high, it's, it's hilarious. <laughs> Because, like, it makes you drowsy whenever you take a Benadryl. Funny stuff. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry, I dropped the, the bottle. <laughs> I got chills for a second. Sheesh. Oh, it's gonna look so cool once it's done. <laughs> so high. <sighs> Loki annoyed because the paint kit that I got is a 24 set and it only has one orange in it. I'm just like. I hate it. This is so hard to get to it again.
In one of my college English classes, there was a bee have out outside right next to the window. Oh my god. So there would be bees inside the classroom. Oh my fucking god. I would I would drop that class. I'd I'd be like, fuck it. I'm not I'm not dealing with that shit. Um oh my god, that that's that sucks. Why would they not get rid of the hive? Like oh, it's called pest control. That's was it like wasps or bees? I like because I bet if it was a beehive, all the all the like vegans are like, don't don't move the bees, you know? They're dying. We can't move them. But if it was wasps, I wouldn't be like fuck. Them. Not too many though. Two at a time, maybe bees. Still like. Ugh, <laughs> Even like a fly in the classroom is so distracting, but like a bee. Like what you need is the kid who is like deathly allergic to like die and then they get sued. No more school. <laughs> oh no. Also, I want to ask, is the audio better? Because um, I, I, I have a different setup this week. And I like rewatch the VOD and there's a lot less like dropping. Like dropping the music or the mic. So I just want to ask if you've noticed any improvement on it. If you feel like answering. Because you know what it was like before. Yeah, it sounds good. No drops. Yeah, yeah, boy. Okay, cool. That's good. It's like I'll watch my vods at like two point five speed sometimes, because um, I mainly just look for like large technical issues. But good. No drops. That's great. That's great. Because I got a new um, camera catcher card. So I got a cam link, and it would it would get really hot. I think it would overheat, so that probably caused something internally to like fuck up. Like burn internal wires or whatever. Um, but I got like, a cheapy, like $20 one, and it works great. So. Because that was. With the cam link, I had to use a different capture software. So another tab open on my laptop. So it just made everything else run a bit slower. But. A lot of trial and error. Honestly, really nice how there's lots of articles online for like troubleshooting stuff. Does reading through manuals or calling tech support sucks? Oh, look at that yellow. She's so opaque. Look at that. This print almost looks like... Like tiger or zebra print. Kind of interesting. I know I said earlier I wanted to do like blue, but I kind of like the, the warmer colors. I'm trying to wear a lot more like brighter warmer colors. That way I don't look too sad. <laughs> I'm also just trying to wear like nicer clothes in general. Like try not to wear like, like tanks and shorts all day. Like I'm trying to wear like nicer shorts or nicer tops or blouses from my closet. Cause I don't go out, so I don't really wear them as much.
I'm really looking forward to gaming content. Like, I think the first game I'm gonna play, because I already have, like, a concept behind it, is Mario Kart. And, oh my god, I was playing with my sister yesterday. And we both haven't played together Mario Kart in a while, in a long time. Because the Switch is in my room now. And I chose battle mode, like, random courses. And for some freaking reason, for all four courses, we got the bomb blast. It's like, why, why did I choose random when I'm gonna get the same level? Every single time. <laughs> so annoying because like, we'd be like, oh, we're gonna get it again? And then we're like, ah, got it again. And then I did buy Breath of the Wild. So hopefully I kind of want to start playing that on my own this or next week. I also kind of want to play like indie RPG because I really like more artsy storytelling type games. Those are my favorite. Because to me, like, you get a lot more, like, original concepts, a lot more, like, original um, designs or art, which I definitely appreciate a lot. Breath of the Wild is great. I just didn't finish it because these days open world games are just too much for me. Yeah, I kind of feel that. Um, I like, because I'm like, I'm a completionist. It's so like, I have to get every single item, every single resource. Uh, like, I talked about it before, but me and my sister, we replayed Breath, or sorry, Breath of the Wild. We replayed Gusa Tsushima. We finished it, like just the main story. Because when I first played it, actually DLC is coming out in two days. Anyway. Um, like, when I played on my own initially, when it first came out, like, I had to do every single side mission, get every single item I could, but, like, I just got burnt out. And, like, I'm not, like, super pro at games, so, like, if mechanics are too difficult, or if it requires too much, like, thinking, then I just don't play, because, like, I play games to relax, so if it's too difficult, then it's stressful, and then it's, like, if it's stressful, then it's not fun, so, then I just won't play. And my friend is playing Breath of the Wild right now for the first time, and he said it's good, so I bought it because he said it was good. Because <laughs> um, I'm very much like, if you want to do something, you're fun to play a game, like, I'll buy it. Like, I don't care. I don't have money, but I have money to spend on a game. <laughs> and by, like, saying I don't have money, I have money saved. It's just, like, I'm trying not to spend as much right now. Just the faster I spend my savings, the sooner I have to go back to the workforce, which I don't want to do right now. I want to be unemployed for as long as I can. Because <laughs> modern society sucks. Which is uh, societal pressures, I guess. I think it's funny because like I like to say I like to watch small this stream but I'm listening to like Hassan in the background right now. 
phone. That's why I like the Twitch market is so competitive. Like you have a lot of people who are already like dedicated, are already in dedicated communities and you're trying to take them away from that. So it's hard to get people to stick around, which I get. Cause like the people who are successful, like they're entertaining. You know? And a lot of the people just starting out, like me, like I don't know how to entertain. I don't know how to keep talking. Like I would never be like just a gaming streamer. God, that'd be horrible. Bad content. But at least with like art stuff, I'm somewhat skilled. I have some background knowledge, so I feel like that'd be adequate enough. No, no, I shouldn't say it like that, but like. You're getting something out of it, you know? Whether like a space to talk, or like chatters, or like some, I guess, art and spell. But then it's also like, I don't really consume a lot of art related content on like YouTube, a little bit on Twitch, but because I'm like in my head, I'm like, I can do that, or I mean, like, I can make the project myself. I mean, I also don't want to stream for it to be like a career because then I think I'd be too focused on like the analytical side of things because right now I'm just looking at like how many unique people or unique viewers I get every stream so that, that's an interesting thing to keep track of like what's gonna make people want to stick around that's what I'm still trying to figure out like my niche for Because people will always gravitate more towards like a personality rather than like the content because your personality is the content. So I'm working, I'm still working on like my online persona, I guess. Like it's definitely a bit more like talkative than IRL me, but definitely a bit more reserved, like the way I talk, I guess. Like storytelling, that type of thing. I'm still trying to figure it out. Get in the groove. But what I'm just trying to get accustomed to now is sticking to my schedule. Like, the only time I missed it was yesterday, and I just started at like 8 or like 9 o'clock instead of 10. So I'd rather be like early than late. I don't know, because looking at numbers will, like, mess you up. Like, on, on IG, I still have, like, the likes turned off, because, like, I get no likes, but, like, I don't care. But I know just seeing, like, no one liked your post will, like, make me sad. <laughs> um, I've never worried about numbers. That's a good way to start streaming. Or start stressing or disliking streaming. Yeah, I agree. Like, right now, I, I can queue up, like, how many viewers I have, but, like, it's on, like, the left side of my screen, so the only thing I'm looking at is chat. I know, like, if I look at numbers too much, like, I'll psych myself out. Like, earlier I had three, and internally I'm like, holy shit, that's like the most I've ever had. Wow. Because in my head, that's like, because I had one chatter who, like, I watched their stream the other day, was a painter. So he popped in today. 
So that means there was like two other people watching. It's like, whoa, that's crazy. It's kind of like, it's hard to contextualize numbers too, because even just one person, just like, like just like a friend on a couch, you know, but three people that's like having a party. Or to me, it's having a party. Um, and like in front of 20 people, that's like a classroom. Like it's, it's hard to conceptualize. That's why like, I find it interesting that like for affiliate, you need three people or three concurrent viewers average but when you think about it that's like that's still a lot like, to get people to want to stick around now when you turn off ig likes does that mean you turn off your notice and visibility of them or does it mean people can't like it so when you turn off your likes because they like soft launches feature either a year or two ago because they were like we don't want children to feel bad about themselves so you know when like when you look at your feed, you can see who liked the post, but other people can't see how the number. So like it'll say instead of like 1,252, it'll say a thousand people like this. So you don't see like a direct number. Or it'll show like just a heart, but no number next to the heart. But you can turn that function back on now so you can see the actual numbers if you want to. It's an optional feature now. I mean, I have mine still turned off because, like, I know, like, if I ever get to the point where, like, my numbers are big enough to matter, like, it will bother me. Because uh, I'm a very, like, analytical person just in general. So I was always, I will always gravitate towards, towards, like, stats or equation type things. And, like, I want to keep a relatively healthy relationship. Sorry, I had my papers in my mouth relatively healthy relationship with online like I'm already really dependent on like just opening it checking it browsing it's interesting because like your phone is so heavily attached with like entertainment now like you're never not bored um, I saw an article on it I can't remember the exact like narrative but it's basically like the whole like American culture because just the ex accessibility of information and also like the advancement of cell phones like it's hard to just like sit down and enjoy a cup of tea sometimes you know on your porch like you have to have that constant like distraction like because I have a Samsung and there's a setting to disable like notification so like ie when it comes up you can hide the content that way you weren't like constantly checking it so like instead of checking my like like my emails right away when i get one i'll check it every couple hours because i i get really anxious whenever i mix like a text or a phone call because i'm so worried that like the one time i miss it like something bad happened you know or like maybe a friend needed help, like needed help in a specific moment and I missed it. Um, so I know I've had times where like just speaking to someone for like five minutes would help me not feel sad, you know? Like, Cause I want to be the kind of person that someone can rely on. You know, like if I ever have my own place, like I always told myself I'd always want to have an extra guest room. So I think that way in case anyone needed to crash or something, they'd have some place they could stay at for a little while, you know? Just in general, I'm trying to educate myself on more like mental health issues and like how to help individuals. Cause I know there's been times where like I could have needed that someone to reach out to. And also looking back at just like how I interact with the people in school, like like they needed someone, and I could have helped more. So I'm just trying to do the best I can now 
That way, if I ever meet someone who does need that engagement or someone to lean on, then I can be that person. Um, because when I was younger, like, I didn't fully understand any issues I had, you know? So I didn't feel like I was equipped enough to help someone else. Because I said it earlier today, today. To, earlier today, today. Earlier today. Uh, just like one positive interaction someone can make their day. That's why, like, I will be- I'm a cynic at heart. But with people, like, I care about, I'll try and be as positive as I can. Because you don't know what's gonna push them over the edge. That's just how I try and live. With my moral code now, I guess. That's why, like, when I was working on customer service, like, there, were, there would definitely be, like, shitty customers coming in. But then in my head, like, I'd, I'd be, like, perturbed in the moment, but then, like, after, like, a minute or two, I'd be like, you know, probably having a bad day. Yes, it sucks that they were, like, reflecting or projecting onto, like, a stranger, but still, like, something else is going on. Like, they're probably not being mean to be mean. It's just how... They just don't know how to, help, how to cope without projecting yet, and they'll get there. As long as you keep being nice to them, there's nothing you can really do further than that. Second coat done. No, I shouldn't have washed it off. Try make a an orange because I don't have a bright enough orange. I'm trying to do like a one to three ratio and get an orange here. Ooh, this is pretty cool. Because I wanted a bit more of a muted orange. Maybe I'll switch to this red. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Instead of this bright scarlet. <sighs> yeah, even when customer service workers are being rude, I don't care. Yeah. I don't either, because like I I know what it's like to be pissed at working. You're like, look, same, same. Um I worked at a suit way and because you're kind of forced to engage with people. And I've been to a couple other locations while working there and while not working there. And training sucks. Um, just in general, it's horrible. But, um, I was worried my wife why my music stopped playing on my end. Anyway, it's so, like, I understand where they're coming from. Um, and also, like, I forgot what I was gonna add. So, like, I'll just be as nice as I can. Because, like, if I be rude back, it's not going to help. Like, I'll spit in my food. I don't know. No. <laughs> but, 
reacting negatively in reaction is literally not going to help. It's not going to help at all. It's just going to make their day worse, give you even worse service, possibly to the next customer too. So, best to just take it. I mean, if they're being like excessively like mean, then I mean, I wouldn't report it to a manager. The only time I will to ask to speak with a manager, like if it's a food safety thing, like I went to a burger place that has a number of uh, colloquial slang for men and fries. <laughs> and there was two workers. I assume they were twins because they're identical twins. They were like working on the line. It's so, like switching between like, grill and assembly. And this was about like four or five months ago. And I had ordered ahead. So, and I was like five minutes past my pickup time, but it still wasn't done because they were busy. It's fine, whatever, not mad. And um, I saw them like playing with each other, like touching and poking at each other. Like I saw one of them like pull the other worker's mask off their face, like have a snack back on their face. So, and then they're going back to touching food, which is like disgusting. Like, one, you should not be touching each other. And also, like, touching your fucking mask, like, that's, that's direct, like, um, biohazard, you know? That's, uh. So, like, I still got the food, and, like, I, I stood there waiting, like, with my bag at the counter. And another worker came up, because I was, I was, in my head, I was spinning, I was like, should I get it to the manager? And, because in my head, because I've done management in the past, and I know me personally, I'd rather have someone tell me about an issue. That way I know what's going on. Because if you don't tell me, then I don't know. Like, I don't know what goes on in the store when I'm not there, you know? So I always tell, like, any customers that would come into the store, like, you know, if anyone, like, misbehaves, like, and you see me, tell me about it. Like, I don't care. Like, that way I can talk to them and coach them accordingly. Because I don't want you to feel like we're not doing a good job, you know? And I think I read the subway pretty good like we are able to maintain a, a positive 90% service score for just about the whole time I was management so about two years so you know um, not to brag but yeah so anyway I was at the counter still debating whether or not to ask for a manager and like another worker came up to me she's like do you need something else I was like do you guys have a manager I can speak to and she's like yeah <laughs> and like to the manager she got the manager and like it wasn't uh, like the main manager because they have like different shift leaders right which is fine because it was it was near like near closing so and it's just general standard any like closing manager does not give a shit you know? or to me like morning crew has usually a lot more prep than evening because like evening shifts will have like the rush right to pretty standard for food service like evening are going to be your busier shifts Anyway, so I talked to her, I was like, hey, you know, this is what I saw, and, you know, I was debating whether or not to say something, because, you know, I, I was just really anxious about it, and I understand, like, this is a, a could be a potentially major safety concern, because, one, you're spreading disease potential, and also, like, it's just basic to face food safety. And I was like, you know, I, I just feel like it'd be appropriate to bring it to your attention, that way this can be addressed with those individuals, and I, because, like, I don't want to see this happen, because I come here all the time. And she's like, can you point out who did this? I was like, oh, it was, it was those two. <laughs> And she's like, thank you. She's like, I'll make sure to talk to them. This will not happen again. I apologize. Looking back, she could have offered me like a refund or a remake, you know, but I, I didn't want to push it too much because I, I didn't want to be like that. Um, so anyway, so I was like, I was like, you know, that's all I want to say. She's like, okay, thank you. I'll talk to them. I was like, okay. So I still took the food home, still ate it because like at this point, it's like, I don't care. Like, I, because like, you know, those type of things happen in fast food but just seeing it is so like shocking you know anyway so as i'm walking out the door i hear the manager start screaming at those two girls and i felt so bad i was like oh shit <laughs> but then i saw it's like they look like young so either like teens or like early 20s and it's like if you're gonna do a job do it well like i don't care if you don't give a shit just like follow basic safety procedures like Especially now during a pandemic, like, you don't want to be the, the reason why there's an outbreak, you know? Yeah, end of story.
I'm not a Karen, but I will speak up only if it's a safety concern. The thing I liked about working at Subway was you get like direct engagement with your customers. Because you'd bake the food as you're talking to them, right? See, you get to like get really close with your regulars and it's really sweet. Because you have people like coming in every day, kind of like like your coffee stand, they come here, like get the same thing every day. And it's really sweet.
Yeah, thank you for the heads up. I was getting, because, um, since it's a Bluetooth mic, if I get too close to my laptop, it fucks up. So is it better now? <clears throat> yeah, th yeah, that's the issue, because, um, since... Um, when I was troubleshooting this initially, because you hear like a static, right? So that means you're, there's another Bluetooth wave interfering with like your mic and then your laptop. So whenever I go live, I have to turn my Bluetooth off on like my camera, my phone and my TV. Because the more devices you have that potentially interfere, the more likely you're going to get static. So thank you for the heads up. <laughs> Yeah, I think if I get, like, a mixer, um, then it'll prevent that issue from happening. So I, I, I might research it more. So like I'm considering getting like a plug-in mic that way I don't have to worry about Bluetooth that's the whole reason I wanted to get a Bluetooth mic is so I wouldn't have I wouldn't have a cord but so I tried to use Bluetooth headsets and the Bluetooth attachment for the mic 
but since it's two Bluetooth items right next to each other, it caused an interference, so it's not really going to work. So either way, I'm going to have to be plugged into my computer. So I might just use like a Bluetooth headset and then like a hardwire mic. That way, you're more you're more going to have more likely to have like a seamless mic connection. So I, I might do that, but we'll see. Because like the over the head like headphones, they give me a headache after a while. I'm going to try and mix more of that same orange. Oh, I used the scarlet, not the bright red. Realize I'm not on cam. So we must end. Here we go.
orange is done. No, oh, actually, there's one more patch. Time for red. Last color. I don't like how there's like. But then. I think a more coherent look would be. To keep like the black lines in between with the embroidery. Final color! Such a beautiful red.
Okay. Red is done. So just a little bit more of a close-up. So I think for now, I'm just going to get some black and touch up any lines that I covered. And then call it a day. So I got like 5-10 more minutes on. Good job on this one. Thank you! Thank you. Yeah, this one is going to take a long ass time. I've said it before, but like, hand printing, or hand painting, sorry, these shirts, it's kind of like, just to get a visualization of what I want to do if I do do patterns. Like, if I'm able to, at some point, do like, actual design. But I still like the idea of using secondhand clothes. And then, like, adding to them. I think that is a really cool concept. Yeah, this is just side one of one sleeve. And depending whether or not I want to paint the back side. Yes, this is the front side, okay. It's half of the front side. It's also hard to paint because it's not a flat surface. But this is all just for fun. Well, keyword that I think this is fun, but you know, that's right. I think after this, I'll have some lunch and then probably play a little bit of Breath of the Wild just to get it started. Because I was going to play it yesterday, but it didn't download in time. Yeah, I think next time I don't have to worry about too much of like getting the lines. As long as I just touch up the top of the embroidery, it looks fine. I don't necessarily have to be as careful or punctual, I guess. I have to be careful when I'm doing these touching ups to not clip. I see that every time, and then I still watch it sometime at some point. Sounds nice with a little bit of piano. I like fake piano.
Okay. I think touch-ups are done. Okay. Um, I think we gotta call it here, boys. Just gotta be careful not to touch it. Oh, my camera's flipped. <laughs> That's still like one of my favorite memes from like the Asian history. Okay. I didn't realize my hair was down. Rip. I don't like it when it sounds because it's so poofy. Anyway, it's fine. Yeah, so um, thank you to anyone who did pop in today. Really appreciate you stopping by. Um, tomorrow, might finish working on the shirt reveal. First shirt reveal. So that'll be dry and then set by tomorrow, so. Yeah. Okay, so once again, I'd like to thank anyone who did come in today. Shoutouts. <laughs> So, went for five hours today. I think that's pretty good. Um, I think it was two hours, no, like an hour to finish the first shirt. And then, like four to four and a half on this one. So, yeah. Whew. Yeah, I'm gonna go chill. <laughs> nice stream. Have a good rest of your day. Five hours. Get some chill time. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well. You guys have a great day. Be back tomorrow. Bye.